domain questions concerning individual property. Our board, not, our board is not involved in, in the eminent domain. So those issues, if you're concerned about eminent domain, you don't need to bring that up, but we're not going to hear it. We're having control of that. And uh, we're going to, uh, uh, we have, we, we appointed an advisory committee for the sale of trails, and, and I will, in a few moments, I'll introduce the names of those. And, uh, but we, here's our ground rule, recommended ground rules. If you'd like to speak, we request you fill out a speaker's uh, information card. If, if you uh, wish to speak, please file that card with us. Limit your questions or comments to three minutes so that everyone that wishes to speak may be heard. <coughs> if you're speaking on behalf of the group, then we'll extend your presentation to 10 minutes. Please try not to duplicate questions that have already been asked so that we can get more useful information for the public. I'd like to recognize, uh, introduce Mr. Pete Butts, who is the chair of the uh, advisory committee. And also, members of the advisory committee were Ms. Marion Thoth, Mr. J.B. Elstein, uh, Jackie Thorpe, Oh, he's asking, okay. Uh, Joel Clark, David Biddle, Mr. Biddle back here, Wayne Brock, and Brian Olmer. So that's the committee, advisory committee members' names, and Mr. Butt is the chairman of that group. And uh, Sable Trail representatives are here. And I don't know them. Uh, but what's your name? Ah. You want me to come up and start addressing, or when you want well, me to come up? Well, we, we're going to turn it over to Mr. Buck first. But uh, uh, you, right. represent, you go represent Sable Trails to some degree. I'm the I'm the spokesman. Whoever does, just have they, they will come up and identify themselves in their yeah. position. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Richard Taylor, and I live in the north end of the county. I'd like to know on your advisory committee where do they live in the county. Are they affected by this pipeline or are they from Trenton? No, they're from all over the county. They're are they from Gilchrist County? Or yes, they... every one of them from Gilchrist County. Well, and they, they live in various areas of the county, not just one location. One okay. it, it, was a, it was our desire to put people that were affected to be in the area of the trail proposed route. I'm affected. Runs right well, my property. We only have so many people to put on the committee. We could uh, keep it from being too, too large. But your input is certainly welcome. Thank you, sir. At the time that uh, we. But anybody that wants to speak now, require to come <laughs> up here, identify yourself for the record, that who you were and what you're speaking. So remember that. Don't, don't try to speak from out there. Come up here. And uh, <coughs> we will. Uh, Get started by recognizing uh, Pete Buck, the chairman of the committee. And Pete, there's a, a list of questions that's been, that's been suggested to ask the Sable Trail. And uh, I don't know if those are available up here. They will be. They will be up here. And Mr. Buck is going to direct those questions to Sable Trail. And uh, uh, if, you, if there's a question up here that you were to ask, it's not up here, you'll have an opportunity to. Thank you, Chairman Harrison. Um, again, my name is Peter Butt. Um, I was selected to be on uh, the uh, advisory committee uh, to the County Commission for the Pipeline. We met uh, about uh, two weeks ago, and uh, in our session, we came up with a list of questions that, uh, again, would cover a lot of uh, topics and things that we have, it would be of interest to those affected, both uh, actual affected landowners and people that would be living nearby the pipeline and, and county residents in general. Hey, let, me, uh, let me interrupt you please. just for a moment. The, the, the main issue for this meeting, this public, is that the public has felt that they've never been really given the route that it's going to go. They've seen several models of routes. People are interested in knowing where 
bricks going to go and who's going to affect it. That's a bit of reason for this. Is if we can save a trail to be more specific on the, the projected route of, of the bridge. Uh, that's why we're here. Not in my domain or any other. <coughs> Right, and, and our list, thank you. And our list, we, we do not deal with any real specific MSOA <coughs> questions. We hope to be handling those at a future meeting with people that may be more authoritative on the eminent domain issues. Um, let's see, uh, as far as the process here, I'll ask the question. Again, I was selected to, uh, to verbalize the question here. Two Sable Trails, they will answer. And then uh, Chairman Harrison will be the moderator in terms of taking questions from both the uh, board, our committee, and certainly the public. So with that, uh, I'd like to begin. Um, the uh, uh, gentleman from Sable Trail asked on our list of uh, 2012 questions that have already been submitted to them that I start with uh, question number 10, and then we would follow in the normal order of 1 through 12, but 10 first, which was, um, and I'm addressing you, sir. Um, how long before you can give a definite answer as to where the pipeline will be placed? Brian, is that John? Can you hear? My name is Brian Parenthal. I'm the Governmental Affairs Representative for Sable Trail Transmission. Before I answer that question, could, I've got a team of experts that we're going to each one of them can answer a question, so we have the subject matter experts as, as Mr. Pete uh, asked a question. Of course, Brian Parenthal, I'm with the Table Trail Pipeline, uh, Lake Mary, Florida, and then I've got with me today uh, Chris Patch and Marty Bass, who are construction and design experts with Table Trail. We'll be answering a few questions. We have our right of way expert, Pam Herring. We also have our environmental expert, Gus McLaughlin. We have a geologist, Dr. Todd Kincaid, if any questions about water, cars, et cetera. We have, of course, myself, uh, Clark Smith, who's my, in Tallahassee, and then the stakeholder outreach, we have Andrea Grover and Matt Doster. Uh, I think it's Brett here today. But uh, if I could, just kind of, uh, you have a, uh, a map. And uh, we can start off with the map right quick. Uh, that's hard to see. <laughs> The, uh, there's a red line, is our primary route. You can see there's a lot of, uh, there's a yellow, that's hard to see. Here's a border, you'd like a border? Each of the individuals that you named, they will, they'll come they up and, yes sir, and we sign the cards too, okay. But uh, there we go. There's a this. There's a red route that goes right here, and then to there. Okay, that there's our primary route. There we go. You can see that uh, through our various open houses, our information meetings, we got a lot of feedback. The uh, this route followed the traditional electric lines. Of course, it's cut across Columbia County there, across the Itchtuckney in two places. And then uh, we decided to move west. Uh, this, this route went to, first route was right here to here. That's gone. Uh, we moved west and did this one. That's still on the drawing board. That's a hybrid route. And then there's a green route that goes all the way down to here. Well, let, let me emphasize, this red route right here, this is our primary route, OK? Let me ask a question. Where it enters Gilbert County, what's the proximity of the proposed route to the existing pipeline? The green lines exist. This is the, I believe, can Commissioner Thomas can help me over. Well, I know exactly where it's at. The green line is existing. That green line there. It's over yonder. That's right there. This is our current preferred route, primary. but our primary route. But just to back up a little bit on where we've been and what we've done, this was the original route we started with mid last year. So, and right here is the Santa Fe River. There's the Itchitutney, 
And the primary route, or the original route we had going through here, we had a lot of concerns from the citizens and from local commission, or commissioners, uh, county officials about, you know, the, the pristine, the chutney, and, and messing with that and, and causing interruptions. And, and then we also had the Three Rivers uh, community right there too. So what we did is we listened to concerns and made the adjustment to go this direction. So are you still following the, um, the big um, power line thing? Not, yeah. not right. Here. Not, 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 I'm getting that. We that's where the power line was at, right there. That's what we were parallel. So in this area, from there to there, we could not. But to get back to what I was saying, we made an adjustment to go back, and then got on the original route back here. For further discussion with landowners and the communities, there was a big concern about Jenny Spring, right in that area. So what we did is we evaluated the route and went further south um, to avoid that, getting back, and you can't see it right there, but it's a little bit off screen, getting back to the major transmission line. Well, the concerns that other counties have, we have the same concerns, but that's not that yeah. that we, when you cross rivers, it's, it's a major concern that right here. Yes, sir. Let me continue a little bit. Using that as the backdrop, just a just a few things before we let Mr. Mr. Pete continue. You know, uh, we started out in, uh, in July. Just a, a few little facts, if I may. Of course, this traverses three states. The uh, the main line is approximately 465 miles of pipe, 55 miles in Alabama, 196. This is approximately Georgia, 214 miles in uh, Florida. 36 inch diameter underground pipeline. 8 cubic feet a day in service by May 2017. So that, that's the setup for the Maple Trail. And then I'm going to have Mr. Gus McLaughlin come up and answer number 10 for us, Mr. Chairman. And, and anything else you need for me while Gus comes up? No, that's your buddy. Gus, can I answer number 10? Yes, sir. We're going to start on number 10. Okay. Hi, I'm Gus McLaughlin. I'm the environmental manager for Sable Trail. What I want to do is talk about the process. I think there's a lot of concern about the process, and that goes hand in hand with when the, power, the route actually is fixed. Essentially right now, we're in the pre-filing process. We're very early in the process. And when I say process, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is the lead federal agency we're dealing with this project. We've entered into a pre-filing agreement with them. Uh, they actually opened up the process for us to actually start working with landowners, public officials, all the agencies are involved to essentially flush out these issues and work on routing. The route, routing right now, you see multiple lines, and there's a reason for that, is, is ultimately what becomes of that is, is, is a fixed line, which we apply to park with. And the timing of all that is right now we're collecting all the information, doing our surveys, we've been out on the ground, working to see where the best place is for the route. Come June, we're actually going to submit draft, a draft filing to FERC. And all it is is a draft. And at that point, you'll see the line on a map. And what it will be is, is, is what we've done today. It's not the final line. It's our preferred route today. And it's based on input. There will be holes in it from the standpoint of we're still working on some reroutes. We're still working with landowners, government officials, you know, so on and so forth. So what I'm trying to do is paint a picture of when does this route really get fixed. So this is June. It goes in. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission <coughs> reviews it and gives us comments back. Ultimately, the final filing, the application, our, our permit application goes in in November. By that time, hopefully a lot of these, these issues have been worked out. In addition, we're also going to be filing uh, with the Florida DDP. We've been consulting the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. We'll have a uh, permit going or application going into the Corps of Engineers, Water Management Districts, uh, the State Fish and Wildlife, National Marine Fisheries. The whole gamut are going to be involved with we're doing this. What FERC is, will be doing with all this information is preparing a, a draft environmental impact statement. What we're hoping for is that, that statement will come out, give or take, spring of, of 15. 
Uh, and what that will do is that will analyze the route it can. It doesn't improve it or anything like that. It basically reduces it from an environmental standpoint and other aspects also. So the summer, we'll, we'll collect comments. We'll have a scoping uh, comment meetings to collect comments on the draft EIS. And then summer of, of 2015, probably later in the summer, early fall, a final uh, environmental impact statement will come out on a route. At that point, that's the staff's recommendation on which route to go on. It's not final yet until the actual Federal Energy Regulatory Commission votes on it and, and, and approves the route. That will be by later on in the fall or, or very early 16. But people are asking, when, are, when is it done you know, and approved and everything else? That's the final approval. The FERC is actually the body that finally approves the route. <coughs> All the work we're doing right now is to give them a route to, to look at and to analyze and approve. And the onus is on us to look at the op, look at all these alternatives, look at all the issues. You know, karst is an issue, uh, wildlife habitat, wetlands, all these water quality, all these things we're, we're supposed to look at, and we are looking at them and providing the information for review. And that goes to the Florida DEP, the Army Corps, and other agencies. So that, that's the time frame. We hope to get a certificate in, in uh, late 2015, early 2016, go to construction, late spring of 16, and be in service uh, May uh, 2017. So that, that's kind of the big picture in the, in the timeline. So hopefully that helps as far as when the route actually gets approved.
with anyone that has been working through the, the process with us um, and we've identified along our study corridor or alternative study corridors along with public officials that Mr. Farenthold and, and our consultants that are in each of the states are working on. Um, so as commissioners, your names are on that list and you should be receiving that information from FERC. Um, and any of those things are also out on the FERC docket. We're absolutely able to, to help you understand and get notices and things like that from them. Um, but in the, in the very near future, they recently, as of the 18th, so just two days ago, um, issued their notice of intent to prepare the environmental impact statement. And with that comes a letter talking about all of that to the stakeholder list that we've provided them. Um, in addition to that, we are also sending landowner letters out, um, letting landowners along those routes know that they'll be receiving this letter from FERC and we're encouraging them to, to be part of this scoping process, attend these meetings, and I'm happy to share the, the meetings that they've, that they've provided um, in, a, in a little bit. But, um, we, we absolutely encourage people on the green route, on the yellow route, and, and on the red route to, to come and participate in those scoping meetings, let their questions and concerns be heard, so that we can put all of that information into our research. So hopefully that helps a little bit. You should, you should be, short answer, you should be receiving um, letters from FERC. Um, if not, I would say get with, with our, our government affairs consultants here, or get with Brian and make sure you get that information. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I don't know this is a part of our question, but that's one of the disappointing things I've had. You know, as the county administrator, my job, you know, is to help provide information to the commissioners as well as the commissioner to provide the citizens. And the map is here tonight. I seen it when you put it up. But I saw it about five minutes before that because Mr. Osteen walks in and shows me a copy of it. And, uh, you know, we're responsible to the citizens of Gilchrist County. There's some things we can change and some things we can't change. But it sure would be nice that Mr. Osteen didn't have to come in, which I thank him for doing that, got a lot of respect for him, and show me this map or show it to a commissioner. And we hadn't even seen or heard about it. Sure. I'll, I'll and uh, that is my fault, but that's when we were going to present tonight. Mr. Crowley. How long have we been ready? Well, we sent it into the letters to the landowners, and then we were going to present it tonight. So that's that's as fresh as those letters were only mailed by the week last Friday. So, uh, well, but it would have been nice if one would have mailed tried, us. Okay, I, I take I take responsibility. And, uh, and and I'm, I'm sorry, you know, and the reason I say that is these people elect these people. I don't know. They hired me. Sir, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's that's been something. Yeah, that's been something. And I, I must admit, I don't, I don't mail out every letter that goes to a landowner. To the officials, I, you've been uh, advised of big issues. If, if y'all want me to do that, I can do that. But it will be a correspondence each day. Well, we're, we're not. That gets in the domain issue. No, sir. Right. You buying or not buying it? But we're not into that. So we don't have control of that. But there's been some uh, uh, disappointing uh, information that we learned late. And, and, uh, as as such. Well, that's not. Well, that's what I, I take responsibility. We were going to, uh, we would mail it to the landowners and we were going to present so it tonight. We're trying to avoid you taking responsibility. No, I, I take it. I, I'm responsible for the uh, communication with public officials. Okay. So that's, that was what we were planning to do. All right. And All right. We need to move on to the yeah. We have a lot of cards here. And, and, uh,